Hello loved ones, it is Miss Veronica back again to share some science and some food with you today. Um, we are going to do another recipe today. It's very exciting. It's one of my favorites. And um, when I was teaching this in schools, it was one of their favorites too. So I'm hoping that you'll love it. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. So um, when we have made food before, we have cooked it, which means we've used some kind of heat for it. Um, so if you remember with our seed balls, we put them in a pan on the stove with our popcorn popper. Um, we would use heat for that as well, or when we're using it on the stove, we would be using heat to pop the popcorn. Today we are going to make a meal that does not involve heat. It does not involve cooking. So um, I don't know if you've ever had a uh, no-cook meal before, but um, it's good for a lot of different reasons. Um, one, it's good for the summertime, so when it gets warm, um, you're not having a lot of extra heat in your house. Um, it's good if for some reason you do not have a heat source, but it's also quite better for the environment. So um, some of you may have learned from your teachers already um, what fossil fuels are and what a carbon footprint is. And basically, a lot of times when we cook, when we're using um, gas and oil and things like that, we are using fossil fuels. And fossil fuels um, are kind of becoming depleted from the environment. They're not as good for the environment as other types of um, energy sources, like using electricity um, or solar power, things like that. So we like to use as little fossil fuels as possible. That includes gas for our cars and things like that. That puts a lot of um, pollution out into the environment. So um, when we cook without heat, we're reducing our carbon footprint. And I know that sounds like kind of a, a big complicated thing, but basically our carbon footprint is just how we are contributing to anything that is not good for the environment. So, um, you know, and some things can't be avoided. Some things we can do here and there. Obviously, you know, you might need to drive your car and that's okay. But if you can take a bicycle or um, take public transportation so that um, more people are in one spot than everyone driving their individual car cars. Um, when you cook without using gas or oil, things like that, you are reducing your carbon footprint. When you recycle, you're reducing your carbon footprint. So anything that you can do that makes, uh, that is better for the environment is reducing your carbon footprint. And that's what we want to do. And, um, and that's what we're going to do by cooking without any oil or gas today. We're going to use a little bit of electricity, but not a lot. So what are we gonna make today? We are going to make zucchini pasta. Now it's kind of confusing because it's not really pasta. Pasta is something more like this, where you've seen spaghetti, things like that. It's usually made with some kind of flour. But we're gonna make zucchini noodles. So we're gonna make um, zucchini just basically in the shape of noodles. And you can do that with a lot of different kinds of vegetables, but zucchini in particular is very good for that because it's very tender, it's soft, it's easier to chew than if you were to do it with maybe a carrot or something like that. This is going to be a mostly plant-based meal. So um, almost everything that's in it has come from a plant. Um, really the only thing that hasn't is going to be the cheese and the cheese you can leave out. We're just putting it in for a little bit of flavor, but it's not something that you absolutely have to have um, in the sauce that we're going to be making today. So zucchini noodles just basically means that we're going to um, cut a zucchini in the shape of noodles and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Then we're also gonna put together an herb pesto sauce to go on top. Now, why are we using these ingredients? Um, I mentioned that zucchini is, um, is good for this kind of thing because it's very um, easy and soft to eat if you're gonna use it kind of like a pasta. But zucchinis are also really good for you. So here's two zucchinis. This one's been peeled, this one has not. So you can see this one still has the peel on it. 
you can eat the peel. In fact, it's really good for you to eat the peel. Um, the peel on zucchinis, cucumbers, things like that have a lot of fiber in them. And if you remember from our other talks on fiber, um, you really need that for your digestion and for everything to move around correctly. Remember that pooping is important and uh, it helps you poop. It helps you poop in a healthy way. So um, we do like to eat the peel as much as possible. For this recipe, we are going to remove the peel just to make it a little bit easier to eat like a pasta. But normally, if I cook it, I just chop it up and leave the peel on. You just wash it before you use it and you're good to go. Now, something interesting about zucchini, um, and if you've never seen one before, it looks a lot like a cucumber. They're in the same family, but this is not a cucumber. It tastes a bit different. This is actually a squash. Um, there's lots of different types of squash. This would be considered a green squash, and it's called a zucchini. And while a lot of people think of it as being a vegetable, a zucchini is actually a fruit. Anything is a fruit if it grows from a flower and it has seeds inside. So basically what happens is when you plant zucchini, it blossoms into these beautiful flowers. You can actually eat those flowers. We call them zucchini blossoms. And once they open up, a little zucchini starts to grow. And it grows and grows and grows, and then the flower withers away, and you pick the zucchini and you can eat it. You have same with uh, cucumbers, same with peppers, um, a lot of things that you would, uh, tomatoes, a lot of things you would normally think of as fruit, as vegetables or actually fruits, and that's for the zucchini as well. Um, the zucchini is also very nutritious besides the fiber. It also has a lot of vitamin A, which is good for your vision, and vitamin C, which is very good for helping you keep from getting sick. Um, it has uh, antioxidants in it, and that's a huge science-y word. I can't remember if we've used that word together before, but basically an antioxidant is something that's in your body that attacks any bad things that are in your body. So it helps to keep you from getting um, harmful diseases. And um, you will find that in zucchini. So um, it's very, very good. You usually want to season it and things like that. It doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own. Um, so usually when I make it in a pan, I'll add some garlic, which we're going to do today. Um, so, uh, but it's, it's very, very tasty. It's very good cooked or raw. Today we are going to use it raw. We're not going to cook it. Okay. The next ingredient that we're going to use today is going to be basil. And um, I'll show you a picture of uh, fresh basil. But um, if you are in our program and have received a kit from us for how to make these things, you're going to get your basil in a special way. Now, um, basil is an herb. An herb is kind of the leafy parts of a plant that are very, very fragrant. You can smell them from a long ways away and um, they have a lot of flavor so it's not just like picking a lettuce leaf and you're like okay that doesn't taste like anything an herb something like basil parsley mint cilantro anything like that it's going to have a very strong flavor and a very strong smell and it's going to be great for cooking um, people also tend to use herbs um, in uh, oils for smelling because they smell so nice or in soaps and other body products and things like that um, but basil is very good for us. Um, it can help with nausea um, and uh, it's just kind of in general very good for your stomach and your digestion and helping you feel good. And um, the way that you will be receiving your basil if you are in our program and received a kit is um, chopped up in little pieces in some oil. We did that because that's the easiest way to get it to you. Um, when we have dried basil, like you might find, um, I don't have any right here, but if you were to find it in kind of a powder form like this, it's fine to use. It just doesn't have, um, it doesn't have as much flavor. So you won't really taste the basil as much. So we wanted to make sure that you got as fresh basil as possible and it'll be sitting in some oil in order to keep it fresh. And um, so it'll look kind of like this, if you can see. Remember, I have no cameraman, so I'm doing my best to show you things. And that oil is actually going to help in our recipe as well, because we do need a little bit of oil in the recipe. So that's what your basil will look like when you get it. And um, another ingredient is going to be our garlic. Now, you're used to seeing garlic bulbs, so they, um, they almost look to me like a little flower that's all clumped up. Um, that is fresh garlic. That is um, usually the best way to use garlic. Um, you, 
uh, take it apart, take the cloves, you use as many as you need to for your cooking. We usually kind of mince them up, which means they're really, really tiny. Um, again, if you are in our program and received a kit, the way you will be receiving your garlic is already minced up for you. Again, this was the easiest way to get you um, the garlic that you need um, while keeping it fresh. And so um, we're going to be using a little bit of this minced garlic. And again, you can see that it is in um, a liquid. In this case, I believe it's in water, um, but you can also be found in oil a lot too. And that just keeps it fresh in here. So um, this is uh, not the whole jar, but we'll be sending you a little bit of this. Um, and we're gonna be using it this way today as well. So we just want some minced up garlic. If you ever make this yourself without our materials, all you need is just a clove of garlic and you just mince it up real small. It means you cut it as small as you can, okay? Garlic is extremely good for us. Garlic is very good at keeping us from getting sick. Okay, it has some uh, vitamin C in it and um, it has uh, been known to help with colds and allergies and things like that. There are people that'll just pop a clove of garlic in their mouth and chew it, which I can't do because it's very strong, but you put a lot more garlic in your cooking, it can only be good for you. It's also delicious. I always put more garlic in things than recipes call for because I love it so much. All right, next we are going to be using sunflower seeds. Now we have used sunflower seeds before in our seed ball recipe and um, we're going to be using a couple of tablespoons of them today. Remember a lot of times you can receive sunflower seeds with the shell on. We're using them with the shell off. Um, that's the easiest way if you're going to use it in a recipe because you cannot eat the shell. You have to crack the shell open first. So um, these are our beautiful little sunflower seeds. And if you'll remember, they are a great source of protein. So um, we can eat these instead of some kind of animal products in order to get our protein. And um, they also have a lot of different vitamins and minerals in them as well. They're a great snack. They're very, very good for us to eat. You can eat them on their own or we can put them in a recipe. And today on top of their health properties, we're also going to um, be using them for texture in our sauce. So we're gonna blend them up and they're just gonna give kind of a little um, gritty texture that we want in our sauce so our sauce isn't really, really liquid. And so that's what we're gonna be using these beautiful babies for today. Now, lastly, we're going to be using some grated Parmesan cheese. Again, if you um, do not like cheese, if you are allergic to dairy, you can leave this out. This is just gonna give us a little bit of um, extra flavor, um, be kind of a very Italian flavor. Um, you can use fresh Parmesan cheese and grate it or you can get it already grated like this, so it's kind of like a powder. Um, this is the type you will be getting from us. Again, it was the easiest way for us to be able to get you what you needed. Um, so I'm gonna be using the powdered Parmesan today as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's gonna be very, very tasty. It's got a very kind of sharp, strong flavor to it, so we don't need a whole lot. Um, now, we're gonna start with the zucchini, because it is the most fun part. Excuse all my, my, all my things here. Now, first I'm gonna show you on this zucchini some ways that you can kind of uh, cut and make your pasta if you do not have the special gadget I'm gonna be using today, which I think probably most of you do not. So I went ahead and I peeled this zucchini, and I'll show you again in a minute how to do that, how to peel something safely. But I went ahead and peeled this one, and there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So you have a peeler, you can go ahead and just keep peeling the zucchini. This is the easiest way to make kind of flat noodle shapes, okay? Really easy to do, you just keep peeling until you've peeled the whole zucchini and then these are gonna be your noodles. Other ways you can do it, this isn't gonna look so much like pasta, but that's okay, all right? You can cut thin slices, make them nice and thin, Get a grown-up to help you when you are doing this. We do not want cutting and peeling and grating and things like that without the help of a grown-up. Okay, so this is another way that you can do it. You can cut it into little discs and that will work just as fine. Um, but my favorite method is the peeler method. Oh, excuse me. Remember, we're always peeling away from us. You just keep peeling all around it until you reach the middle. You'll see the core is kind of fun. I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. It's where all the seeds are located. You'll, so you'll know when to stop. But these will be your noodles. 
if you're going to do it with a peeler, or again, you can just chop it into little discs. Okay, so to the side. All right, I'm going to use the rest of that zucchini later. No waste. Okay, so this is my zucchini that is not peeled yet. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold it by its little top, by its little nubbin. Okay, and you can either put this on a um, cutting board or you can hold it. But what I want you to remember is that we always peel away from our fingers, okay? Um, you don't want to, we don't want any uh, skin in your uh, zucchini, so <laughs> we want to be nice and careful. Okay, so you start at the top, but again, not too close to your fingers, and peel down, okay? And you want to make sure that you're using the correct side of the peeler or it will not work. Again, a grown up can help you with that and make sure you know what you're doing there. And you just slowly and carefully peel all the green bit off. In this little spot. Okay, and when we're all done with that, now it's naked. <laughs> we can peel some of the bottom off. Again, it's nowhere near my fingers. Okay, and then we're going to chop off this little guy on top because it's basically a stem. We can't eat that. Okay. And there's your zucchini ready to go. Um, you're going to want to wash the zucchini. Um, I usually do both before and after I peel it just to make sure. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to um, go with this because I already washed it beforehand. Okay. So now this is super fun. Now you may not have this at home and that is fine. But I wanted to show it to you because it's really, really fun. Okay. This gadget is called a spiralizer. Basically what this does is it makes spiral cuts in different kinds of fruits and vegetables in order to make it um, kind of you know look like noodles or like um, chips and things like that. It's an easy way to do that um, without having to use a knife. Now um, you can get them all over. They range from ten dollars to fifty dollars. You do not need this. You do not have to get this. Um, maybe in the future if you guys and your family decide that this is something you love to do you can invest in one but you do not need it. Again you can use the peeler. You can use the knife. The way that it works though and you have to be careful of your hands because these are all little knives right here. We stick its little bum on these spikes to hold it in place. We bring it forward and there's a little hole right here and we stick it against the hole. Now what's going to happen is it's going to rub against all these little knives right here and it's going to create a spiral kind of noodle look. So first I have to make sure that I'm turning it the correct way. I always turn it wrong the first time. Oh, and I broke off the little handle for it, so that makes it more difficult. <laughs> but once it gets going, there we go. Once it gets going, it's going to make zucchini noodles. Okay, you see that? If I had the little handle, it would be a lot easier. But that broke sometime during school last year. <laughs> But you can start to see what's happening here. It's making little spirally noodles. Now there's a bunch of different blades that come with it so that you can make really thick noodles. Um, you can make little discs, things like that. And um, that makes it so you can make, if you've ever had those little butterfly fries at a county fair, you can do that with potatoes, things like that. Um, you can make little spirals of apple, which is really fun. In this case, we're doing our zucchini. It's almost finished. And once we're done, you'll be able to see what the core, what the inside of the zucchini looks like. Alrighty. So we can start here. Alright, so I'm going to take our noodles. I'm going to put them in this bowl. Woo! And as you can see, sometimes they're very long. These can be cut. They don't have to be that long. Sometimes they're very short. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we, again, are going to be very careful with our fingers. All right, that's going to be it. So I'm going to carefully pull the core out. That's what the inside of a zucchini looks like. Now, you wouldn't be able to see even if I held this up to the um, camera because it's very, very, very hard to see. But there are dozens of tiny little seeds in here. So those are the seeds that are inside of the zucchini. If you ever cut a zucchini straight across, 
and you'll be able to see them very well. So we're going to take all of our zucchini noodles. One zucchini made a whole bowl of noodles. And we're going to put them to the side. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. Alrighty, we don't need any of these guys. We're going to put them out of the way. Put our little nothing out of the way there. Alright, and we're going to start to make our sauce. And the sauce does require some way to blend. Okay, so there's lots of different ways. You can have a regular traditional blender that you might have at home. Some people have things like neutral bullets and things like that. This is called an immersion blender. These are really, really inexpensive. Um, and there you basically, you just see the blade there. Okay, we're gonna be very careful. You just stick it down inside what you wanna blend and you press the button and it blends it up. So we're gonna use today because it's the easiest for me to show you. Um, I also take these to the schools as well when we do it in school. Um, worst comes to worst, you can, um, the, the thing you're really going to want to pulverize is the seeds here. So if you had to, you can always put these in a baggie and just kind of squish them real good and kind of almost turn them into a powder. Put all the rest of the ingredients together and just mix them up really well if you don't have any way to blend. But blending is the best way to do it. So I'm just going to use this little jar in order to make my sauce. You can put it in a bowl um, or you can, again, do it right inside of um, your, your blender. Okay, either way it works well. Okay, and we are going to start with our sunflower seeds. Okay, now there is a larger recipe on our website if you want to make this for your whole family. This is um, basically a um, one portion size, um, so we could get you all the things that you needed easily. Um, so I'm going to make it how you're going to be making it at home, but if you would like the larger recipe, that's going to be linked um, down below. So you'll be able to um, figure out how to make this for your whole family if you would like to do that. Okay, so we're going to start with two tablespoons of our sunflower seeds. Okay, we're going to do the same with our Parmesan cheese, two teaspoons. If you are allergic to sunflower seeds, it doesn't happen very often, but if you are, any kind of nut or seed can be used for this, or, and we have had to do this before, you can leave it out. It's just going to mean you're going to have a little bit more of a liquidy sauce than if you use them. So fear not if we have allergies. Okay. And we're going to do a half of a teaspoon of this garlic. It tells you right on the um, container how much equals a clove of garlic. And half of a teaspoon would equal a whole clove of fresh garlic. So that's going to go in here as well. Okay. And lastly, we're going to put in our basil with our uh, oil. Okay, and if as you're blending it together, it looks too dry, if it's not really blending very well, you can just add a little bit more oil to it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that in. That's going to be our, our liquid ingredient. It's also going to make it a really cool green color. All right. And that is it, my friends. You can also add salt and pepper to it if you want to. I usually wait till the end and taste it to see if it needs it. Sometimes it does need salt. You can always put that in if you like. Now, I'm going to take my immersion blender. I'm going to stick it in my jar. I'm going to blend it up. super liquidy and that's fine that's part of cooking is just kind of seeing how things are coming together and then fixing anything that might be a problem okay so I'm just gonna put a little pinch and we're gonna blend again like you would a smoothie or you can leave it so that the sunflower seeds are still a little bit chunky 
which I like because then that gives us a little bit more texture. Um, and again, you can always add a little bit more oil if you would like it to be a little bit more liquidy. I'm just going to put one more little, little dash in here. Okay, stir it all around. Now, it might look a little funny because it's green, but the green is just from the basil, okay? And let me tell you, this smells so good with the basil and the garlic. It smells amazing. I'm going to bring this actually a little bit closer to you kind of see what's happening inside my jar, okay? So this is all of those ingredients that we just put together and it's just blended up. You can still see some of the chunks of sunflower seeds in there. If I wanted to, I could continue to blend until those were completely blended up. So hopefully you can see that. I'm sorry if it's blurry or anything. All right, friends, that's as easy as this is. This is not difficult to do. It's basically just putting ingredients together and blending them all up and then we pour them over our zucchini noodles. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I have my bowl of zucchini noodles and I have my pesto sauce. And I'm just going to pour that over. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to eat this. Again, you can taste it to see if you want some salt or pepper in it. I think mine's gonna be just fine because it's got all that garlic in it. All right, I'll mix it all up because I like my sauce mixed up. So you can toss it either in your bowl or if you're making a larger one inside a, uh, a big bowl or pot. Okay. All right, I wish you could smell this. So this is what it looks like. It's a very simple, okay, we've got our, um, our zucchini noodles and we have our sauce. Now the sauce doesn't look like much in here. It doesn't look like what you would expect a spaghetti sauce to look like or anything like that. But let me tell you, friends, this is so flavorful. It has so much flavor in it. You won't even notice that it's not real pasta that's in here, okay? And now there's a bunch of things that you can add to it as well. I'm gonna put some little tomatoes on mine. Okay. You can chop them up or just stick them on in there. You can put uh, mushrooms in here if you like. You can add some onions you want to, whatever you would like, the more the merrier when it comes to fruits and vegetables. Um, I like to have uh, my tomatoes in there. You can even put the tomatoes in the sauce before you blend it. Um, that'll give it a nice little sweetness too. And we're going to go ahead and give this a try. I should have cut my noodles. You can tell they're really big. Unless you like to swirl, swirl the noodles up. I never do that very well. It's good enough. You'll have to excuse me if I'm messy. Mm. This is really delicious, you guys. It's actually one of the best ones I've made so far. I might have to use this minced garlic and stuff more often. Um, like I said, it's very, very easy. It's very simple, but it's a way to make an entire meal that um, your whole family can enjoy. It's got basically all the food groups in it. Um, and again, you can add whatever you like to it. If there's things you don't like or can't have, you can subtract as well and it's gonna give you protein, vitamins and minerals, fiber, all that good stuff. And you're gonna do it without, excuse me, <laughs> without um, any harm to the environment because we're not using any fossil fuels. We're not increasing our carbon footprint by using oil or gas in order to cook our food. So I really hope that you enjoy this. I really hope that you um, learn something new. And um, Again, we use some fun gadgets on here that's usually just to show you things that we can do, um, things that are fun. I mean, spiralizer is fun. I use it all the time. <laughs> but you do not need those things in order to make a really good, healthy, inexpensive meal at home. All of these things you can get at the grocery store. You can get much smaller versions. The garlic can come like that. Again, you can just buy a clove of garlic. Um, same for the cheese, the sunflower seeds. I have large portions because it's what we give out to everyone. You don't have to buy them that big. You can buy them much smaller, much more inexpensive. So um, I hope that you had a good time with this video today. I know I did. This is going to be my lunch and I'm very excited about it. Uh, until I see you again, I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are healthy and happy and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.